One thing it seems like we all need more of right now is healthy, authentic relationships, right? We have this loneliness epidemic on the rise. I want to stop it in its tracks. And in my last episode, I talked about how people hold the key to achieving our goals in the new year, but maybe you need help on where to meet people. So in today's episode, I'll give you 10 ideas on different places where you can meet people, plus one bonus that's a little out there. And I'll give you some tips on how to start building those relationships, not just meet them, but actually, you know, take them further. Welcome to the Creating Opportunities Podcast. This is the place for smart, ambitious professionals where we teach you how to build authentic relationships so you can achieve success in any area of your life. My name is Cassandra, I'm your host, I'm a speaker, an iced coffee lover, and I am here to help you meet more people. Why? Because no one should do life alone. So let's get into where you can meet new folks. So I actually spent a lot of 2023 trying to meet new people and I tried a lot of different options. Some worked, some did not. I will give you stories around both as we go through this list. And before we get into it, I just want to reiterate again, the reason we're doing this is because we need people to thrive. People are messy, people can be hard to deal with, but we are not supposed to do life alone. So you need relationships in your life. And also, people in our lives just lead to bigger, richer, fuller lives, right? It's why this podcast is called Creating Opportunities. Every person you meet, every hello is a potential new opportunity, something you never saw coming. Those opportunities come through people, and so, I want to help you lead a bigger, richer, fuller life. And we need people to do that. So let's start talking about where you can meet people. I actually put this in two categories. First category is places where regularity of meeting is built in. So it kind of helps start building the relationship for you because there's regular meetings to it. The second category is going to be where it's not as regular of a meeting, but it's one-off events, but they're the type where it's not weird to try and then take a relationship further. So let's start with the ones where it's pretty darn easy to start building relationships. First up, any kind of ongoing class. So this could be your Wednesday morning Pilates or yoga class. This could be a community college class on Tuesday nights that you've signed up for for a semester. Anything that meets on an ongoing regular basis, that's a great place to start meeting people because you're going to just start becoming familiar with one another. You might not hit it off the first night, but after time you start talking. You know, when I lived back in LA, I used to take this Pilates or like this bar class, right? And everyone tends to sit in the same spot right? Is this just me? We all have our spot in a class. You tend to stand in the same spot or sit in the same spot and you do that week after week. After a while, you're going to start doing a smile and a hi to the person next to you. And then that can turn into, hey, tell me more about you or you overhear a part of a conversation and it's not as weird to jump in anymore. So anything that you can show up to regularly, like a Pilates class, again, a community college class, anything like that, counts. Great place to start meeting people. I will say on the flip side, one-off classes like this do not work. So two things I did this year that were really fine for a night but didn't go anywhere were I took a cooking class at Sur Le Top and then I did a charcuterie board class at a local cheese shop. The Sur Le Top class was great for the evening. You were put in a, in a group and three other women came by themselves. We went in a group together with two friends and we all had to work together and we chatted and had a great time. But even extroverted me couldn't figure out a way at the end of that without feeling really awkward of being like, hey, I really enjoyed talking with you. Could we maybe get coffee sometime or could I get your number? Like, it just feels odd. And so, while I had a great time for the night, it's not a really easy place to build a relationship. And those hobby-based one-off classes are great for learning a skill. I went and bought a walk and learned how to, how to stir fry after my cooking class, but they weren't great for building relationships. Okay, the second place to meet people is to join a team or a group, like 
pickleball. Pickleball is all the rage. Is there a recreational pickleball group you can go to or softball or kickball or a hiking group or a walking group? Something that's active, something again that meets regularly, but maybe it's not a class, it's just an affinity towards something. This is where something like meetup.com is really helpful to see if there's a group you can join. Some places have dinner clubs where you try a different restaurant every month, or here in Phoenix, one I haven't been able to go to yet, there's a thing called drink and draw, where once a month this group comes together and you just sketch or draw whatever you want at this bar and you're all together. Cool. The key with this is you can't just go once. You have to become a regular. So if you're going to sign up for that hiking group, commit to going like five times. One of the things I think that's holding us back in building relationships and what's making loneliness a bigger thing now is we live in a world of really immediate results and relationships take time. They're the antithesis of everything else we're doing in society right now. So you're gonna have to work really hard to know, okay, I have to give this five or six chances. I can't just show up once and go, mm, it didn't work for me. You have to become a regular to make those friends, but places with regularity built in help. The third option, volunteer somewhere. What is a cause you care about? Where is somewhere you can volunteer, not one off, but on a regular basis? Where is a place you can come to and say, hey, I'd like to come every Saturday and be part of the, you know, serving the homeless team or doing some sort of work at the women's shelter thrift store. You want some place where you're giving back, but you're also doing it at a regular interval so that you get to know other people who volunteer and also the people who work there. It's a great thing to do. Another version of this would be, can you sit on a board or committee, like volunteer for an event for your association? So that might be for a time period, like I'm going to sit on the planning committee for our regional conference. Great. There's going to be regular meetings. You get to know the other people on that volunteer team. So something where you can volunteer on a regular basis. And right about now you might be going, okay, these sound really obvious. Well, stay with me because a couple of them coming up, not so obvious. And also just because something's obvious doesn't mean we always do it. So use this just as a chance to go, hmm, where is a place that I can integrate this that I haven't really been trying yet? You know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are some different ones coming, but yes, I know some of these might be simple, but simple doesn't mean we do it. Okay, fourth option. This is one of my favorites, is does take a little bit of time, but become a regular at a third space or a third place. Have you heard of this concept before? This concept came out of the idea that all of us have our home, our work, and then you want to be known in a third space. This would be your cheers, for example, where everybody knows your name. So for some people, that's church. For other people, that's a bar that they go to or a coffee shop you're at. I became a regular back in the day at this magical Starbucks in uh, the Valley of Los Angeles where celebrities would show up. But there was a group of us that worked from that Starbucks every single morning. And so you would show up and you would see other people and start to wave hi and ask about their project. And if there weren't tables available, it wasn't weird to go up to one of those people and go, Hey, can I share this table with you? Because you've seen each other every morning. So start to think, where can you become a regular? Also, it's just really fun to be a regular and sometimes you get perks for being a regular, like a free coffee here and there, a free drink. So think about where can you make a third place, that third spot in your life where everybody knows your name. Oh, another example of this, very obvious that I forgot, is the gym. If you go to the gym every morning or five days a week at 6 a.m., you're going to meet the other committed gym goers at that time. And again, you're not gonna talk on the first day, but as you keep showing up at the same time, you're going to build in relationships. It's going to be easier to say hi or to ask a question because you see each other all the time. So. You know, it's January, it's that time where people make those gym commitments, stick to it this year, not just for your health, but for your relationship building. That can become your third space. Okay, the fifth option, 
co-working spaces. So if you have the cash, if you have the funds available, you might want to look into joining a co-working space. This is also something that if you work remotely, you might want to talk with your boss or your company, etc., on are there any funds available? Is there any budget for having a co-working membership? Let them pay for it. But going to those spaces, you see other people who are there every day and they often have events, right? Like happy hours on Thursdays or a communal coffee break at two in the afternoon. So they're a great place to meet other smart, ambitious professionals like yourself and get some work done and then build some relationships. Okay, one more that's a regular meeting thing, and I'm putting it on here. I know it's not for everybody, but church might work for you. I know I kind of brought it up earlier, but church or synagogue, etc., could be a place for you. I say could because I'm sad to say that most churches have turned highly individualistic right now, where you just show up, you listen to a sermon, and you leave. Even community groups don't meet as often. There's not as many opportunities, but if you can find a church that does have community groups, that do meet regularly, that those people are within each other's lives, they are a great place to meet people who have similar values to you, you're like-minded on things, and you can build relationships there. So while they're not what they used to be in my opinion, they are still a place to meet some people, so wanted to keep them on the list. Okay, so those are the places where you can meet people because you're seeing each other on a regular basis. Some of that uh, is built in to help you start saying hello and building those relationships. Now we're gonna talk about places that are more one-off events, but these are mostly gonna be professionally driven. And so it's not as strange at a professional event to have met once and then get someone's card or connect on LinkedIn and say, hey, I would love to follow up with a Zoom call or a coffee chat, etc." So let's get into those ideas. First one on that set is join an association or go to an association event on a regional level. I say regional because you want to meet people within your space and national events, there's conferences, spoiler, that's next up, but like national is often more online only, we're talking about like where can you meet human beings face to face and regional groups tend to have in-person meetings. So you might want to sign up, but also you often can attend regional association meetings or industry mixers as a guest and just pay for the one-off event. I recommend doing that first just to see if you like it at all and then you can decide to join. But going to these events are great because you're meeting people who are in the same space as you. It sort of takes down, it removes one barrier of getting to know each other because they already assume you have this one big thing in common. So it's really helpful in that sense. And then it's totally normal to meet people at those events, get cards, and like I said, follow up. Remember, relationship building is not one and done. Networking is not getting a business card, that's just getting a business card. Networking is building authentic relationships, which just like every other relationship, take time and energy, you know, meetings over time. So you can meet someone at one of these events and then you're gonna follow up ask for a coffee, ask for a 15 minute Zoom chat, something like that. But again, because you met in person at this event, it's not as strange to take it to that next level quickly. Another version of this is, let's say it's not an industry one for you, where else do you meet people? Well, I would be looking up Facebook groups around your area. Look for meetups and Facebook groups around where you live. So for example, here in town, there's Scottsdale Living, there's Scottsdale Girlfriends, there's Phoenix Business Women's Group, right? There's things like that that aren't technical professional associations, but they're groups that still host some sort of meetups in person. And the nice part about checking those out on Facebook is often there's pictures of the past events so you can see how many people actually go to this. How active is this group actually? Which I really like before I go because I hate when I show up something and it turns out it's just me and one other person. No thank you. Even, hi, even extrovert over here doesn't like doing that. So check Facebook groups and see are there other just interesting groups in your area that you could join on Facebook and then they have in-person events? And then I already mentioned this one, but conventions, conferences, one-day summits, 
even in your town. Things like that are great places, especially if you're trying to develop your professional network and build professional relationships. Those are great places to meet those people because a huge part of why you're going is not just the education of the event, but trying to meet other people in your industry. So again, you can be with each other that day and hanging out for a longer amount of time actually creates more attachment. And then you can follow up, you can do a Zoom call down the road, you can do a coffee chat, etc. So start looking for what are the opportunities that you can attend that are a little bit longer form. Okay, and then the last one that I actually had on my list, and then I thought of another, so I'm giving you a bonus, but this last one of the official 10 is a bit adventurous, but it's a fun one. Host a cocktail party, invite your friends, and ask them to bring a friend you don't know. Now, there's a great book that came out last year from Nick Gray called The Two Hour Cocktail Party. It is literally step-by-step -step how to host a cocktail party, what to do, what to ask. It's only two hours. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the description box below or in the show notes because it'll really walk you through this and take a lot of the pressure off. But I would add to it the layer of invite your friends and then ask all of them to invite someone as well. This is not a rager. This is not 100 people. This is like 15 people. So invite 10 friends and hopefully five of, you know, five of them bring someone else and you got 15. Cool. It's a really nice way to meet new people that you probably have some interest in because you have that person in common connecting you. So try a cocktail party. Okay, so like I said, I have a bonus way to meet people and this one's zany. This isn't for everybody, but I have to put it out there and I have a story to go along with it. You need to start doing Uber. Start driving for Uber and then be specific about where you Uber around. The beauty of Uber is you can drive Uber anywhere. So is there a type of person you want to meet? Where do they hang out? Start Ubering in that area. I actually told a college student this once when I was still career coaching in a college. One of my students wanted to be in production and he was, we were doing a resume review and he had on his resume that he drives for Uber. And I went, you drive for Uber. Do you ever Uber around the, you know, the studio lots? He goes, no. And I went, I would start. All those people love to use Uber and Lyft to get places. So you can drive here in our town that doesn't have any of those people around, or you can go do it up in Hollywood, circle lots waiting for people who need to get picked up, and you could end up with some pretty cool people in your car who could give you some opportunities. About six months later, he came back to me and said, hey, thank you for that tip. I actually got production work because I started Ubering around the Hollywood lots and a guy got in my car who's a producer and he introduced me to someone else. And now this kid had so many production freelance jobs going, he was almost not going to graduate because he was too busy working, okay? So Uber can make a difference if you use it really wisely. So join Uber and then be smart about where you're Ubering. So let me know in the comments, which one of these are you going to try this year? And when you go to an event, you need to know how to introduce yourself. And so to help you with that, I've got a great video for you right here. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell. I can't wait to help you make even deeper, better relationships for a bigger, richer, fuller life. Can't wait to see you in the next one.